Joe. In your experience, uh, the, way, the physical way you all play defense in the secondary, is, is that unique? You know, are you all unique around the league, how physical you all are? I think that's the brand of football we play here. Um, I've coached a couple of secondaries that had some physical players going way back to Minnesota, Antoine Winfield. But I think it's been a good luxury because you want guys that can cover and are willing to come up and tackle. And I, I have a whole room full, full of those guys. Where's the confidence level at with Jordan Howard right now? Should he be the one that primarily fills that role with now? Yeah, that's what we're looking at right now. We have some different combinations, but he's definitely a guy that's been taking reps there. Uh, we're going to put him out there. Um, he's able to play multiple positions, but he's gained confidence. And you gain confidence as a young guy through reps. So I feel good about uh, him being able to step up in that role. He's one of those that won't really talk about his game. We actually interviewed him a few weeks yeah. ago. Like, what do you bring? What can you, I guess, speak for him that he, his game, that he brings with his game? Um, versatility. He can play both safety positions. Um, he can play the, the buck position. We've also put him out there nickel with no work, and he's done great. So his versatility is one of his strengths. Um, the thing for him as a young guy is don't feel like you have to go out there and make every play or play perfect. And I think early on that's what he was going through. And when you do that, at times you make mistakes. So I think through getting reps, you know, being in the preseason games, being in the games, that he's gaining confidence and getting better. Joe, what have you seen from, from Jordan Love? He doesn't seem to take a lot of negative plays. He, seem to, he seems to protect the ball pretty well. Yeah, he's – um, you know, a very athletic quarterback, but he's a pocket passer. He's really not a, a runner. Um, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Deshaun, um, you know, in terms of a veteran quarterback, a similar style, similar type of athlete. Um, he definitely has the arm strength. Um, he's a problem when things break down. You know, he can create plays with his feet. Um, it's a problem trying to get him down, you know, if you're rushing for. But, you know, he's young. I know it's his first year there, but you can see all the signs are there. Uh, I think he's going to be a, a tremendous quarterback. Do you expect them to take more shots over the top, knowing that, you know, it's Howden's first chance? And, and also with the Green Bay receivers. I mean, love a lot of yeah. these guys are new names, Wicks, Dobbs, some of these, you know, deep routes that they're running. Yeah, they're a vertical passing team. You know, so I, I mean, for me as a secondary coach, I expect that every week. So, and um, I just rely on our guys playing our technique. And to me, if you know, if they want to take shots, it provides opportunities for us to make plays on the football. So we'll we'll see what happens. So I know you weren't you weren't here last year, but the joint practices with the Packers is that tape that you're able to go back and look at and kind of get an evaluation? Maybe. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I might have peeked at it. Well, the, the cost of doing business that DA talks about sometimes with getting defensive holding. Mm -hmm. pass, I mean, is that? How you all look at it, you get physical, and every once in a while you might get a yeah. holding call, but it's over the course of the game, it's going to pay off for you all in the long run. Yeah, I'm very, when I talk to those guys about playing press technique, I'm very demanding in terms of staying on the body. You got to stay on the body, so when the receiver gets down the field, the quarterback got to make a decision. Do I want to throw when this guy is that tight in coverage? So we're always trying to stay on the body, and, and doing that, sometimes you get penalties. I tell the guys when you're the first ones on me. After that, then it's on them. Um, but I really just coach what they're looking for. That's one of the first presentations that I give is just the NFL rules in terms of, you know, hooking a receiver, cutting off a receiver, grabbing the jersey. So I want them to understand what different officials are looking for in terms of that type of penalty. But at the same time, I want them to be aggressive in coverage. Is there a subtlety to that? I mean, can you be a – you know, good at hand checking like a basketball and get away with it. Depends on the player. Yeah. Some guys are a little bit more crafty. It's something that over over time you learn, you know, how you can cheat just in terms of your body position, how to use your hands, keep them inside. You just don't want the obvious penalties when you see guys grabbing and there's that extension where you see the jersey pull. The obvious ones are the ones that, that they're going to call. Joe, are there, are there some crews that are more prone to that? Absolutely. And we're very aware of that. But we're not going to change the style in which we play. Alante Taylor's still trying to get his first career pick. He thought he, he thought he had it in the other game. What, what, what have you seen from him, and, and in particular that play that was obviously called out of bounds? I thought he played uh, a lot better. Not that he played bad the first game, but it was first game was his first experience. It was live bullets flying, um, adjusting to you know what they were running offensively. But I felt like he grew 
from the first week to the second week. I thought he played really well. Um, I thought he played well in coverage. You know, he stepped up in the run game. Um, I, I like his length. I like his quickness. I like his mentality in terms of playing that position. And I think he was continue to get better with reps. How do you, how do you grade him? You know, he gives up some catches, like, kind of catches. Like, it, like, are you looking at the nature of the catches, like how the tackles made, stuff like that? Yeah, because every, every coverage you have has a strength and a weakness, right? So you try to minimize them by executing with the proper leverage or the proper technique. So if you if they have a completion, but you get them to throw the ball where you want them to, then you know, that's good on our part. It's normally all the plays you guys see, the explosive plays, you know, in bad leverage, trail position. You know, the obvious ones are the ones that, you know, we're not executing correctly. Um, but some of those catches are okay. So right after the game, some stats said Lattimore gave up one catch, and then I think he told someone he didn't. So can you clarify which one it was? Like I said, some catches are okay. It's not always man and hey, if they catch the ball, oh my God. You know, like I said, as long as we minimize the gains, um, that's that's the most important thing. Um, if we eliminate the deep balls down the field, make them throw the ball underneath, then we're going to make them work the ball down the field. And that's what, really what we're trying to do. Um, and he played an extremely clean game. You know, technically, you know, I gave him a couple minuses because I don't want his technique grade to be that high. I told him he laughed. But uh, he played a really clean game. You always have to have something to build on, right? You can't give someone a perfect day every week. There's no doubt. With him, um, you know, DA was talking about how it, it felt like he came into camp really focused this year. Do you notice a difference between like preseason Marshawn and then week one, week two Marshawn in terms of how locked in he is and, and things like that? Um, he's he's very good in the meeting room. Um, very smart player. It kind of controls controls the room at times. Um, so for me, I. I, it's my first year here, so I was like trying to fill out who he was as a player and how I was going to approach him. Um, but again, he's he's very dialed in. I think you know at times as a player, you know you can't go 100% on every single play. Um, so I make sure I try to take reps off of him so he can't go 100% when he goes out there and plays. But I feel like he's been the same guy. Um, I feel like when he gets challenged, like you see the the matchups with Mike or if he's against Alave, I think that's when he really gets his juices flowing, when he has those premium matchups. But uh, he's a very competitive player and definitely the leader of our room. Joe, when you say he controls the room, can you kind of give him? It's just one of those things when, when he talks, everybody listens. You know what I mean? E.F. Hutton, right? So when he talks, everybody listens. Um, but he's earned that through his career and through the things that he's he's done on, on the football field. Joe, is there anything about how the – Surprised you guys, or maybe it was better than you we were anticipating. I mean, you don't see like a, a lot of fifth round rookies uh, necessarily kind of push into like, a big role right away mm -hmm. in training camp. You guys were kind of putting them out there with the ones a couple times. So, yeah, it's just he had the traits. When you look, you know, he had he had good size. Um, he had the the speed, the athletic ability. The thing that probably surprised me, not surprised me, but the versatility, his ability to play basically almost every position in the back end. And very smart um, and confident. And the thing early on, as I said earlier, is I think he was trying to play too perfect early on, like not make a mistake. And if you try to play like that, it miss the NFL. You know, so there's gonna, they're going to make some good plays on you. But I think once he relaxed and he got those game reps, then you saw the confidence start to grow in him. And you saw more of the playmaking ability. Now, he hasn't made the splash plays. But a lot of it, when you watch him, he doesn't get a lot of plays his way because he's doing his job. So you love coaching him because he's going to do exactly what you tell him to do. In terms of what you can share, what do you think has made the third down defense so effective so far this season? Russian coverage. It will never change, ever. <laughs> it's Russian coverage. You know, we got to put our hands on people um, to make the quarterback hold on to the ball a little bit longer. And if we're a little bit off, you know, the rush, they got to beat somebody one on one. So it just works hand in hand. And if you have those two things going, then you have an opportunity to be really good on third down. And how unique is this second level who kind of have to blend both responsibilities sometimes, guys like Demario and Pete? Like, how, yeah. how unique are they in that aspect? No, nah, they're Demario, like I said, he's a pro's pro. I mean, he, he elevates everybody's game because he holds everybody accountable. And even, I mean, as coaches, I'm like, man, I better do a better job, man. You know, he's out there yelling. Um, but he holds everybody accountable. Um, just in terms of the communication, guys executing their jobs. It's, ne it's never a day off with him, never a day off. And then Pete, you know, 
athletic. You know, just a freakish athlete is a linebacker. But our ability to be able to play, those guys play three downs, being able to match up on tight ends and backs, um, you know, it's just an advantage for us, you know, in my opinion. And then when you put it all together with our D-line and with the guys we have the secondary, if we just go out and we just do our job, you don't do anything special, just do your job, I think we'll put ourselves in position, you know, to be in a lot of games to, to win them. It's more about you doing what you know you do well versus trying to match up to what the other of the offense might. No, do. that's that's part of it. You know, we're going we're going to make sure we're putting ourselves in position to create the best matchups, whether it be what we're doing up front with our pass rush games, or how we're matching people up, or what personnel package uh, we put on the field. But at the end of the day, everybody just has to do their job. You don't have to do anything special. You know, if you got a, a certain pass rush game, execute it. If you have a certain coverage, execute or blitz, whatever it may be, just do your job. We're good enough across the board. If everybody does their job, then we'll have opportunities to win. And you saw last class, a little bit of the pass rush <coughs> doing the home run from last year. Just what sticks out about it this year? And it seems like just a lot more attacking style. Just what is it about this? this play? Yeah. I mean, Coach Grantham uh, and BY, man, they're, they're great defensive line coaches. I just you know, sit in the meeting and just listen to some of the ideas, some of the creativity they have in terms of pass rush games, how they're going to attack different protections or combinations on different guys. Um, they, they do a really good job. And I feel like from a talent standpoint, you know, the players are there. You know, it's a player's game. I feel like we have them. We just got to put them in, in positions to win. And I feel like right now, DA's doing a great job with our game plans. Thanks, Joe. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Joe. See you in green.